how to set up a modded Tales buyer with custom mini and extra asset registration. In order to do this, you need to prepare your workbench. The things you'll need to be able to use the custom mini plugin and extra asset registration plugin, very straightforward. You need a copy of Tailspire on Steam and you need to install R2 Modman and set it up correctly. That's what we're gonna do right now. The first thing I'm gonna show you is Tailspire itself. Uh, you can see it here. This is the Tailspire Steam window. This is where you will buy things and do all your good stuff. Uh, as you can see, I have a really rather large amount of hours in Tailspire, 520 or so, though many of those are because I've left it running overnight. I haven't spent 520 hours of content on that because that would be difficult. That being said, uh, the feedback for Tailspire is overwhelmingly positive. My own feedback is positive. I run all of the Fourth Culture games using Tailspire these days, though in a relatively limited way. Um, and I just wanted to um, give it a big plug. So if you're here, you buy it, you install it. It's very, very straightforward. And once you have it, you will end up with an installed instance of Tailspire. Now, the next thing you need to do is presuming you've been using Tailspire for a bit and you're like, ah, oh, I just want more models. I just need more models. How do I get more models? How do I get more things? Well, this is why you're here. There are multiple ways to do this, but the easiest, trust me, is you go to tailspire.thunderstore.io and this wonderful place leads you here. And there are many, many things you can see there. Thunderstore is a, a Unity modding uh, site. And so if you are into Unity modding, you will discover many useful assets and other modules here. But, and you can see there's these beautiful, look at this beautiful spell jammer that's down here in this beautiful Tarrasque. I would like to use this beautiful spell jammer and this beautiful Tarrasque that have been downloaded a few times. I wonder who made them? Oh, who is this remarkable The Fourth Culture? How great they must be. Um, <laughs> thank you. No, jokes aside, the, the thing you really need to do, and this is the stuff that is where Lord Ashes and Hollow Fox and Ebro and all these other people have been doing things for a while, especially Lord Ashes and Hollow Fox, uh, who are the main mod uh, authors, it seems. Um, the thing that you need to do more than anything else is click this big R. It's a very easy, obvious sign, but if you miss the big R, you're off to no start whatsoever. But install the big R, you go and you download it manually here. And then what you'll end up with is a thing called R2 Modman. And the way you run R2 Modman, after you've run the setup for it, me, you will see this which is gonna ask you what games you want to run. So here I can run a game server, I can run a game client. You wanna run the game itself, you don't care about the server. And there are a bunch of different games that you can mod, Unity games that you can mod, um, and that people have modded using RT Mod Man as a framework for delivering those modules. And that's really what it is. It's a way of delivering modules. So, uh, can I do it without? Yes, you can. Should I do it without? Maybe. Uh, practically though, we're gonna to go to Tailspire. Now, you can see there's a bunch of profiles here. You'll have just one that says default. Don't worry about the profiles. I've got one so that you can see I have a blank set of modules in my installed box. This is not my normal config. I'm doing this for you lovely people. So, because I'm doing something for you lovely people, how about you do something for me? Right down there, there's a little subscribe button. And then there's a small little heart and an alarm bell. If you just click those three things for me, I will be so happy. Please. Anyway, sorry, pardon me, that all came over me. Now, coming back to the point. <laughs> uh, we are going to install a few important things. So, you click online here. If you've not seen this interface before, you've not seen R2 Mod Man, it's very, very straightforward. Uh, there's the mods that are installed, there's the mods that are potentially available and, you know, uh, downloadable. There's a thing here called the config editor, which shows you that there are config files that get created associated with the modules you install and how you can edit those. And then finally, there is the settings itself. And the settings will include things like, oh, where does this data file go? And well, where's my Tailspire directory? You'll need to know this. This is an important file to know. So you just need to know this exists. I, what I tend to do is just grab that file there, cancel that. And I'll stick it in a little um, text file so that later on I know where my Tailspire directory is, which is important. Other than that, however, I'm back here where it says installed and there's nothing installed there, so I need to install something. I go to online. You can do this a couple of ways. 
The easiest way, and I'm going to show you the easiest way. The easiest way is I pick on Mini Trask, I hit download, I download with dependencies. And now you'll see I have six things in my dependencies. You see I have uh, BEP in XPack, which is a, uh, a pretty um, important, I think, core component. I don't know what it does, but it seems to be in, in associated with everything. Set injection flags, file access plugin, the extra assets library, the extra assets registration plugin, and the mini Tarask. And I believe what it is, is the extra assets library is the thing that allows you to create more assets inside the Tailspire menu. And the mini Tarask is obviously the thing that um, uh, myself and Hollow Fox have created. Thank you very much for your help there, Hollow. Uh, and then that is it. That's total. Now, this is purely for how do I use R2 Modman to get additional models in Tailspire? We'll do another episode on importing models from HeroForge or using STL models or um, uh, 3D printed uh, definition files and bringing those into HeroForge as a separate short episode. But this is purely around how do I use R2 Modman and the mods that are available to me. So having done that, I now feel comfortable. I have my mini Tarask here. I am going to hit start modding and you will see that in the background, slowly and surely, a tail spires. And there we have it. Our tail spire begins. You'll see that there, this little window will appear. And this little window is going to be basically able to tell you what's happening, what's happening in the background so that you know the various things that have happened. This is important because a lot of modding is a very, very iterative process. People will make mods and then Tailspire, which is still in early access, will change things and those mods will break. And so it's important to realize that you run this to check what the, the state of the world is. And you look at this log file and you send these log files if you need help from the modders. And if you do need help or if you want to get hold of me, it's a good opportunity to take a look at our Discord on the Fourth Culture. Many of the modders hang out there. They also have their own modding Discord. Uh, if you jump on our Fourth Culture Discord, I will tell you where to find that. I will tell you where to find good people. And we're very, very happy to chat about Tailspire modding. Now, what we're going to do is take a look in this top left corner over here and you can see where it says, oh, look, here we go. We have set injection flag plugin and we have the TMC's extra asset library. Lovely. We've only got two mods at the minute. Normally that's a long screen of stuff in my world, but we're just going to play with these two mods for the moment. We'll hit begin, and then we're going to just create a new campaign, new board. And as always, when you open a brand new Telspar board, it will just leave you in a gray space where nothing is visible. I am expecting there to be a custom Tarask right here. Now there's a known thing right now which needs to get fixed where we can take this Tarask and we can click on it and pop it onto the table. But there isn't an image for it in the mini. That will come soon um, and will be arriving. I think that is due in the next fix that uh, Hollow Fox does. But for the moment, just be aware that we have a custom Tarask here. How cool is that? This Tarask specifically is known as Tara, and Tara the Tarask is in fact the spawn of um, Barney the Dinosaur and uh, the Tyrannosaurus Rex from Toy Story. Even has some Buzz Lightyear colors. Now, that being said, I've got Tara the Trask there. Now, what I really would like to do is have Tara face off against some other creatures. Obviously, I have more creatures down here, which are the standard ones that come from Tailspire, but I'd like to add some more. And here we come to a another small limitation of the state of the world as it is right now, which is that Tailspire reads its files when it starts, which means that adding a module right now does not dynamically add it into Tailspire itself. So if I was to go here, and let's say that I wanted to add the mini spell jammer that is James. I download it with dependencies, it pops in, it appears. Unfortunately, as far as I'm aware anyway, James does not magically appear down here. So instead, I have to restart Tailspire. So I exit, I leave it, it closes back down again. And then I will go back via R2 Modman, see here, where I make sure I put my James there. I'm actually going to install, while I'm here, I'm also going to install the Aracocra and Asuma. Okay, so you can see Aracocra, Asuma, James, Tara. 
Start modded. The modding, let the modding begin. And we haven't really done anything except install these additional packs for models. And, you can see here, those packs will get picked up. You can see here, right there, where it said Arsenal Paladin, Arakokra Paladin, Arakokra Owl, various things like that. So just to go back here, we're gonna hit begin again. Now that we've hit begin, we are going to go around and find out up here. Hit play. And so uh, we see Tara the Tarask hanging out here. So we're now going to add a few models. So let's see what we have. We will look here, we'll open our library as we always do. And as you look over to the, uh, the left here where you have this little asset button, you now see there is a custom content folder. And in the custom content folder uh, over here, you can then see that uh, all of these different creatures now exist. So there is a, let's say there's an Asuma here. And we're gonna grab an Asuma Paladin over here. And then we're gonna grab a an Arakokra Gunslinger. And then maybe we'll grab, so, so you can see various, various of these creatures exist. How oh, lovely, look at that. Well, these are good and we'll talk more about these uh, custom assets a little bit later because we're going to use um, a couple of tools to pull things off the internet in different ways from Hero Forge and from the internet itself, sort of from uh, uh, Patreon or via the DM Workshop or things like that, and then paint and make our own models ourselves. But we'll come to that in a minute. Before then, though, what we're going to do is we're just going to finally drop in our spell jammer. Look at that, there we go. And it is a thing of hope to me. Huge spell jammer, there we go. At some point in the future, it is my fervent hope that one of these lovely, lovely modders will make it so that you can actually stand the model on the deck of the spell jammer. Right now, if you try and did that, it won't let you. There's no collision awareness. It's not actually an asset in the world. But soon, we hope, it will be possible for that to be the case. And so instead, our spell jammer would have wonderful people on it. And how cool would that be if we could all just have a whole bunch of people hanging out in the spell jammer, flying through our own game? Because obviously we turn on the fly toggle for our spell jammer. So now you have a flying spell jammer with one of our heroes on it. You see our hero is gray here, but the spell jammer and the Tarask are not. And in another video, I'll show you how I use Blender to paint these models. These models are made by the amazing MZ4250. They're actually part of the original TSR line, or actually the, the Wizards of the Coast model range. And he has re-sculpted them in Blender as part of the license that's available to us, and has then provided them for free uh, to download via uh, the DM Workshop um, on shapeways.com. But I thoroughly recommend that you sign up to his Patreon, but we'll have more of that in another episode. Until right now, that is me signing off as to how you use Tailspire to add custom minis to your game. Thank you very much. Have a great day, and I will see you all soon. Bye.